Jamestown. At the start of the 17th century, England was still militarily and commercially weak in comparison with Spain and Portugal. Domestically, as the ancient feudal system decayed, the nation was burdened on the one hand by a displaced peasant class it could no longer feed. And, on the other, it was seeing the rise of a merchant and artisan class whose markets were exceedingly limited. Like Spain. Then, England needed a new world. In 1605, two groups of merchants, one calling itself the Virginia Company of London, often abbreviated to the London Company, and the other the Plymouth Company, recruited a cartel of investors and joined in a petition to James I for a charter to establish a colony in the territory of Raleigh's patent, which, as far as anyone knew, encompassed whatever portion of North America had not been claimed by Spain. The Virginia Company was granted a charter to colonize Southern Virginia, while the Plymouth Company was given rights to Northern Virginia. The Virginia Company moved swiftly to recruit a contingent of 144 settlers, including the families of money gentlemen as well as poor people. The latter purchased their passage to America and the right of residence in the colony by binding themselves to serve the Virginia Company for a period of seven years, working the land and creating a settlement. In December 1606, the hopeful band of men, women, and children boarded the Susan Constant, the Discovery, and the Goodspeed. 39 perished in the course of the voyage. The remaining 105 arrived at the mouth of a river, they called it the James on May 24. 1607. And they scratched out Jamestown. Historians blithely refer to Jamestown as the first permanent English colony in the new world. Permanent. In this case, is a highly relative term. Jamestown was established in a malarial swamp well past the time of season appropriate for planting crops. In any case, the gentlemen of the venture, those who were not indentured servants, were unaccustomed to manual labor. And hacking a colony out of the wilderness required the hard work of all hands. Within months, half the colony was dead or had fled to the mercies of the local Indians. Then matters grew worse. John Smith and Pocahontas. In 1609 came what the colonists called the starving time. Desperate. The survivors resorted to acts of cannibalism and even looted the fresh graves of their own number as well as those of local Indians. Jamestown would certainly have joined the Roanoke colony in a common oblivion had it not been for the presence of the soldier of fortune the Virginia Company had hired to look after the military defense of the colony. The intrepid Captain John Smith managed to get himself adopted by the local Indians, who were led by the powerful old Chief Powhatan. And, from them, obtained enough corn and yams to keep the surviving colonists from starving. He also instituted martial law in the colony, sternly declaring that only those who worked would eat. Enforcing this iron discipline, Smith saved the fledgling colony. Relations between the colonists and the Powhatans were always strained, simply by refusing to share their food. The Powhatans could have wiped out the struggling colony at will. Yet they did not do so. Albeit they repeatedly threatened war. Doubtless in an effort to intimidate Chief Powhatan and his people into maintaining peaceful relations. In 1613, Captain Samuel Argall kidnapped his daughter Pocahontas and took her to Jamestown, and later to Henrico as a hostage. Fascinated by the English, the Indian princess quickly learned their language and customs, and rapidly evolved from hostage to ambassador. 
in 1614. With the blessing of her father, she married John Rolfe, a tobacco planter. The union brought eight years of peace between the Indians and the settlers, a period crucial to the survival and development of the colony. Rolfe took his bride on a voyage back to England, where she was a favorite with London society as well. As the royal court. Sadly, this remarkable young woman succumbed to an illness and died. In England, on March 21, 1617, at the age of 22.